So Guy's a Pompeii patient, so I don't expect many of you, or if any of you, have ever heard of the word Pompeii. It's an orphan disease that Guy has. And this picture, I think, tells a lot of, tells a, you know, a picture is worth a thousand words, tells a lot for us about sort of the data needs that we have in orphan diseases. Pompeii disease is a, uh, is an inherited metabolic condition. It leads to progressive morbidity and premature mortality. Um, the disease is often variable. So some of you may have heard of the movie Extraordinary Measures with Harrison Ford, Brendan Fraser. That's the Pompeii story. It's a Hollywood version of a Genzyme purchase a number of years ago. But I want to come back to, to Guy. So what does this picture tell you? What do you see in this picture? Everyone can shout something out if they want, and I'll jump to the answer in a second. This, uh, give you a little more info on this, and this is a selfie. This is what Guy took himself and sent it to us. So Guy, as some of you can see out there, you see the uh, fusion pump. Guy's receiving treatment. Well, some other things you might pick up in the photo, you see that this is at home. You also notice that Guy is not a young guy. It's probably the mid, I refer to this as early middle age. So, um, it's interesting, Guy's been on treatment for three years. He has a progressive disease that he's been living with all his life. The treatment for Pompe disease, really we got uh, notice of compliance in Canada in 2006. Research obviously started more than a decade before that on this disease. It's not the, the, the Pompe disease, acid maltase deficiency, glycosin storage disorder type 2. Um, any number of names for it was first identified in 1932, so we're over 80 years of knowing about this disease. Treatment's been very late on this one. But I think this tells us a lot of what the data gaps is. It tells us this picture, this photo, tells us what Guy's needs are and how he needs to be looked after. But let me go to a little test question for you here. So after a notice of compliance, What's the biggest challenge for treating an orphan disease? So this is where you get to use your little magic pads there. Is it selling the therapy to the docs, convincing patients to be treated, finding patients to be treated, just getting those treatments paid for? Interesting. So market access is miserable in Canada. I, I agree with that. But it's probably not the biggest challenge for treating orphan diseases that's out there. Yeah, it's a challenge, no question about it. When you come out with a therapy that costs hundreds of thousands of dollars a year per patient, per year, it tends to be a bit of a sticker shock. But Guy's gonna die if he doesn't get treated, as many patients do. Uh, guy goes on to progressive system failure. Um, that's the typical life that the patient has. Actually, I think finding patients is probably the biggest challenge in orphan diseases. If we take a look at Pompe disease, so as I said, we've been studying this for quite a long time, been on the market almost a decade. We've only found 10% of the patients that are in Canada. So how is that, that we go through, that we have so many patients that are suffering from a disease that really only 10% have been diagnosed? Is it because we're not very good, as my wife would say? Um, no, probably not that. It's just, I think it comes down to the nature of the disease. And it's not alone in Pompeii. There's other, we're in a number of orphan diseases. Another one is Gaucher. We've been in this one for 30 years. 30 years, and we've only found a quarter of the patients in Canada. Now, there's some other interesting stats here. You look at this, 10% of the patients that have been diagnosed with Gaucher disease are not being treated. It's not a market access question. It does raise some other questions that are in there. There is certainly a treatment question, but why haven't we found them? So how long do you think it typically takes for a patient with an orphan disease to be diagnosed? Six months, two years, four years, 10 years, 20 years? And the results are, all right, pretty close. It's closer to 20 than 10. It takes decades. Some will be quicker. There's always a range that are out there. There'll be some found, but most patients with an orphan disease, these rare conditions, go through life with progressive problems, failures, issues, and get passed around from physician to physician. 
the pomp A disease, typical patient starts to manifest itself. There's, there's an early infantile onset that's usually caught because the, a baby would be dead within a couple of months. Those are usually caught, but it's the later onset, it's teenage years, couldn't run as fast as someone else, a little slower than someone else. It starts to get there and it gets identified as many different things as opposed to the disease. And it really is decades before they're properly diagnosed. And then the risk to our health system and the risk to the patient is, is that inaccurate diagnosis leads to irreversible damage. Um, you know, organs just don't magically heal themselves. And so that is part of the challenge and the data that we have out there. So let me ask you one other question in terms of they're not being diagnosed well. It's a huge issue that related to those with these rare conditions where we actually have treatments for it. But then the question is, well, how do we help find these patients? Where's the data out there to help us determine who has the disease? How can they be better diagnosed? What tools can we have? And so here's your third question, your third and final question of the test today. Which way doesn't help finding the patient? A traditional mail survey to homes? Create your own targeted diagnostic test for healthcare practitioners? Hang around the company lobby? Billboard advertising? Reps? What do you think? <laughs> you know, it's, it's funny, it's, uh, I threw that in there, it's actually probably number four, billboard advertising. You can advertise the disease all you want, but a patient can walk into a doc's office and say, I have this condition, I have Gaucher disease, I'm pretty sure I have Fabry disease because Dr. Google told me that. And the doc will go, nah, you don't. Just go home, it's just a little pain, you'll be fine, rest, do some more exercise. Actually, number three, they're hanging around the company lobby. So two weeks ago, um, one, of, uh, one of my staff's walking through the lobby. There's some guy standing there. He's, uh, he's looking very apprehensive and concerned. And he said, uh, you know, I need to te sp speak to someone. My wife uh, was just diagnosed with Pompe disease. And the doc basically just told her, you have Pompe disease and walked away. No further info. He says, I didn't find anything. And so I did my search on the web and I found Genzyme and I found your location, so keep your address up to date. Um, on the website, it's important. And the patient's just, uh, so it was the husband of a patient, um, was in there, said, look, I don't know anything, what can you tell me? And so we sat down, so that's how we found a new patient. Finding each and every patient is a big deal for us, as you saw, in terms of identification. <laughs> so it works hanging around the lobby now and again. Who would have thought? But a lot of these technology techniques are, you know, it's a question for us that's out there. How do you get something that is so rare, so infrequent, top of mind? Yes, we've created diagnostic tests. We work with a company out of Montreal, just made an easy dry blood spot test. We give that out to everyone. They can get tested how they want to do. Traditional home mail survey. Actually, it's, uh, we have some hope on something like that working through. Working with the reps, disease awareness out there but it always continues to be a challenge. There's gotta be a better way. I'm not sure anyone has found it. We've trying a number of different things around the world, but it always comes back down to reminding why we're doing this. And the question in our mind is how do we keep developing new ways to look after Guy? It's one thing to develop the treatment, to get it approved, show that it works, get it paid for. But if we don't find the patient, if we can't help the patient, understand what their disease is and then ultimately be treated in a way that a patient like Guy wants to be at home um, in the comfort of his home to be looked after. We're not doing a very good job as a system. So I'm going to end it there and uh, take some questions later. So let me turn it over to Mark. Thank you. Thank you.